Why are park managers like this? Check this clip out. Mobile home mommy. That's right. You can tell you everything you need to know. Just click on Homes for Sale, and uh, you can look around all our parks and see what we've got. Okay. Okay. One last question, E. Um, let's sure. say let's say I find a house that's used out there that I like, and I want to. Um, do you all normally have like any ones that are like handyman that need to be fixed up? Yeah, we do sometimes. We just sold the last one uh, yesterday, like that. In so another. I'm in another. In, over in Lansing, Michigan. Okay. But no, we get them. And if you see something that look, looks good, um, you can uh, go right to that website and click on application and fill out an application and then call me and we'll see about getting you approved. Okay. Okay, Elliot. And like I, I what I wanted to tell you is if I purchase at home, like the one you sold yesterday, am I able to go in and actually um, fix it up? and sell or finance it to a family, of course I'll make sure that they pass whatever background or credit qualifications they no. have. No, no, we don't. Uh, you, you, could, you could fix it up and sell it, yes. You can't just oh. rent it, though. Oh, okay. So with that being said, I could fix it up and just move it out the park entirely, correct? Well, yeah, but the, these things are they're very expensive to move. I've never seen anybody actually do that but yeah you theoretically you can okay i just wanted to make sure i own four so i i help one part with infill in their part and so now they're completely full and i'm just trying to find other parts that are, would be willing to work with me okay we'll go to the website and see what we've got and see if it'll work okay thank you bye thank you bye bye okay listen some would say that was a bad call because they weren't investor friendly. Oh, they sounded a little short. Listen, y'all, that's not true. Some parks are just not investor friendly. And I don't. I think we need to take into account of why they may not be investor friendly. They may have had a bad investor that came into the park, promised that they were going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to bring in the mobile home. I'm going to bring in a qualified buyer and they're going to be lovely. And that was not the case. I've known situation where park managers are like, we got this mobile home here. This investor came and purchased two mobile homes and they've been sitting vacant for seven months. They haven't paid lot rent. They haven't returned our calls. Sometimes it's because investors have come in and haven't completed what they said they were going to do. Or it could just be a family owned park. They own the land, they own the mobile homes and they're only rental incomes. Don't let this uh, pull you away from mobile home investing. Sometimes making phone calls are not going to work. Some people need face-to-face -face interaction. I've had several parks over the phone tell me no. I will go and visit them in person and they did not tell me no. They said, well, we've never done that before. This will be our first time. Do you mind if I call you back tomorrow or call you this evening once I talk to my partner or you know what? We would like to work with you. That that sounds amazing for helping us fill these vacant lots. Don't get offended. Remember, not all parks are the same. So here are a few tips that you can do when calling these parks. Make sure that when you're calling, you are prepared to listen. Don't cut people off. The biggest thing I hear over the phone is when I listen to the recorded calls, it's like, hey, I understand you're excited and you're talking, but you were cutting her, her or him off. Let them finish just absorbing the information. And then if you have questions, you can move forward with your questions. The second thing I would like to cover is when talking to these park managers and park owners, it would be helpful if what? You knew some information about the park. How many lots are in the park? Is it a bigger park? Is it a smaller park? Is it an all age community or a 55 plus community? What, how, how, how big are the lots? Are the mobile homes closer together? Or are they spaced out? Why is that important? 
I'm glad you asked because it gives you something to talk about. I drove through the park. It was absolutely beautiful. I love how all the lots are spread out. Everyone has space in this community. It looks completely different from other mobile homes that I've visited. Or let's say you drove through the park and you notice there were vacant lots. That leads me into my next point. When we're calling, we want to come off as PPS, Professional Problem Solvers. We don't want to call and just ask, hey, are you investor friendly? Because I want to I wanna come and invest in your park. We want to lead with value. Leading with value gives us greater opportunity. So let's say you drove through the park and you saw that it was nice. They had nice lot sizes. The, the park looked well kept, everything. The grass was cut. The, the roadways looked good. But you notice it was 10 vacant lots, right? Some park owners would love for us to come in and help fill those vacant lots. But Nicole, what if they aren't investor friendly? Well, my solution to that would be, I saw you had those vacant lots. I appreciate the conversation with you. I understand you're not investor friendly, but I have a list of people actually looking for a nice mobile home park that they can pull their mobile home in. Do you mind um, telling me what your referral fee is if I was to help a qualified buyer bring in their mobile home? Who can say no to that? Now, some may, but more than likely, if I told you it's not an investor friendly park and you tell me that you can still bring in a qualified buyer where you won't be a part of the deal, but you can bring in and get me some residual income. Sure, I'll give you a $1,500 referral fee. That's a referral fee just for you connecting the buyer with the park. That's called relationship building. And with relationship building, you could grow into, you know what? You've helped us fill three lots so far. I think we want to give you a chance of you bringing in a mobile home. Or actually, we have this one that's been vacant for a while. I remember you said you had a team. Would you be interested in looking into that property? These aren't scenarios I'm just making up. This has happened to me before. Um, another helpful tip. Record your calls you want to record your calls record your calls because a lot of times you won't remember what was said over the phone and you may be so anxious you may have forgot something you want to record your phone call so you can analyze yourself Ooh, okay i forgot to say that i didn't properly introduce myself i wanted to say hey my name's joe I'm new, I'm new to the air, whatever it is. You wanna make sure you are preparing yourself by critiquing yourself, recording your phone calls. You could go through and listen to what you didn't say so you can help yourself with what you need to say. You can also look at those calls and realize a pattern. Okay, I've called five parks and they've all said this. Let me be prepared for call number six that may ask me the same thing. Record your phone calls. I will drop a link to the recording app that I use. It's called Tape A Call. I believe I pay a monthly, um, a yearly subscription. And last but not least, be okay with being told no. We don't ever want to come off as, okay, they're not going to let me invest in their park. Well, I can get someone to Y'all seen it all. I can get someone to come in and I can pretend that it's going to be on their name, but I'll just put it in my name. Trust me. It is several parks out there that want your business. You just have to seek them out. Okay. So be okay with being told no and leaving that park alone. I get it. It's in a prime location. They got all these vacant lots and you want to help because you can bring value. But if they don't want your service, then don't help them. Move on to the next part that will tell you yes and welcome your support. It may take you 20 times. It may take you 100 times. It took me 49 phone calls and everybody was telling me no and I was getting discouraged. I was so accustomed to being told no when caller number 50 actually said, yeah, we take investors. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I got silent. I didn't know what to say. And you know what I did say? Okay, I'm going to call you back. <laughs> I was totally not prepared because I was accustomed to being told no. I didn't have my rebuttal re I didn't have my rebuttal ready for when she actually said yes. 
So yes, I did call her back and I built a relationship, but just be prepared to be told no, be okay with it. The key to being a winning mobile home investor is not by closing this number of deals by this time, but is by being consistent and persistent. If you can't be consistent and persistent, it's not gonna work because some days are amazing. Woo, some months you'll get five deals you just closed. And in some months you're gonna be like, wow, I might, I might need to invest in something else because some months are slower than other. others. That's like, it's like that in any business field that you go into. So make sure that you're consistent and persistent to move forward. Until next time, peace. Mobile, mobile home, home.